Well, our Russian opposition leader Svetlana Tikhanovskaya is in Brussels this Monday to meet with EU foreign affairs ministers. The bloc currently preparing sanctions against those it blames for rigging the presidential polls in Belarus in August. But there are divisions over who to sanction and how exactly. Well, to get the latest, we can cross to our correspondent Dave Keating. Dave, a meeting in Brussels on the issue of those sanctions was already held last week and we saw objections, notably from Cyprus, the bloc failing to agree on a way forward. What are we expecting now from these foreign affairs ministers? Yeah, the, the hope is that this breakfast briefing from Tikhanovskaya to the EU foreign ministers can sharpen resolve and get them over that disagreement uh, over whether and how to impose sanctions on Belarus. A draft list of about 40 uh, figures in Belarus would be subject to these sanctions that have been uh, drawn up. But as you mentioned, Cyprus, according to EU officials, is blocking progress on this, not because of anything related to the Belarus issue, but because they want to use this as leverage for getting the EU to impose sanctions on Turkey, a totally unrelated issue. Cyprus is angry that Turkey is conducting oil and gas drilling in what it considers its territorial waters, and it wants sanctions imposed on Turkey before it would sign off on any sanctions against Belarus. And uh, still, these foreign policy issues require unanimous approval in the Council. Now, the uh, EU leaders, the national prime ministers and presidents, are due to meet at a summit on Thursday that will be dedicated to the topic of Thursday. So these sanctions against Turkey are probably happening anyway, but Cyprus doesn't want to give up its hand so early. It wants to delay this discussion until the summit on Thursday so that Belarus and Turkey can be discussed together. Uh, the EU countries that want these sanctions say, look, we don't have that amount of time. That's particularly the countries in Eastern Europe. They say we need to act quick to show support on Belarus and put pressure on Lukashenko. Uh, so that is definitely the message that the opposition leader will be giving to EU foreign ministers this morning. Because, Dave, if they, they're clearly struggling to put sanctions in place, you know, what other options are available to put pressure on Belarus? Yeah, the EU is hoping to pursue a kind of carrot and stick approach here. Of course, sanctions are the stick, but Poland has proposed a mechanism that would be the carrot, that would be a 1 billion euro fund to help the Belarus economy. That would be EU money going toward Belarus. Now, that would come in response to Russia's decision to give Lukashenko's government a 1.5 billion euro uh, vehicle for helping the economy. Uh, this is very much turning into a repeat of what happened in Ukraine, where the country was torn in two between Russia on one side and the EU on the other. Of course, in that situation, you had a sitting leader with close ties to Russia who wanted the country to be in Russia's orbit, but then you had an agreement, an association agreement, being considered with the European Union, and that eventually is what led to protests uh, against the sitting leader and fast forward into the future, and it's what eventually led to the Russian annexation of Crimea and war in eastern Ukraine. Obviously, the EU wants to avoid a situation like that in Belarus. But again, we have a situation where a country is kind of flirting with the EU, that Russia doesn't like it, and it's being torn in two. Now, there are plenty of people here in Brussels who say, look, Belarus rightfully belongs in the Russian sphere of orbit, and any fund going toward Belarus would be a provocation, an unnecessary provocation against Russia. But uh, the EU countries bordering Belarus, Poland and Lithuania, who share a common history with that country, uh, really don't feel that way. They think Belarus's proper alignment is in the EU sphere of influence, not necessarily as an EU member state, but as a country closely aligned with EU and independent of Russia. So that's kind of the big picture context behind all of these decisions. And of course, the decisions that are taken in the next couple of days could have a major impact on the future of the region for many years to come. OK, Dave, thanks indeed for that, Dave Keating there, our correspondent in Brussels. And that a meeting of foreign affairs ministers is set to get underway in just under an hour's time.